Hi everybody, welcome to Breakfast at Tiffany's. It is Friday, January 6, 2023. This is the first Breakfast at Tiffany's of 2023. So I wanted to come on here and um, share with you my origin story or the origin story of Tiffany's Treasures and Trinkets. Now, I know I've shared this before. I, I believe that Vicki and I discussed this in one of um, in one of the first Breakfast at Tiffany's, but that was a couple, you know, over a year ago, uh, well over a year ago. So I thought I would start out 2023 by reintroducing, re retell, you know, retelling the origin story, you know, how we got started, how we got to where we are today. And I know Lori's planning us on some, you know, meet the team kind of things uh, in a kind of fun, fun way. I was gonna do some meet the team things, but then she started doing it before me, so I guess, <laughs> guess she's doing it. Um, so, I have been a bookkeeper my most of my professional life. I started doing, um, well, I was started in um, like receptionist, office management kind of things. I worked for a company that um, needed a bookkeeper and didn't really want to hire a new person. And I said, oh, I'll learn, I'll do it. So they had an offsite accountant that came in and just taught me the basics. And I basically learned bookkeeping on the, on the fly, like on, you know, hands-on, being immersed in it. That's how I learned. And I'm, that's how I learned best. Um, I did try college for a while and, and didn't last. I went to one year. But that's because I don't learn great in a classroom setting. I learn much better doing hands-on, being thrown into it, just doing it. That's how I learn. So over the years, I have evolved, and I did a lot of positions where I was office manager slash bookkeeper, and you know, kind of did, did both things. And then um, I, I was all then my my most recent part full time job when I was still working full time as bookkeeper. That that company sent um, put me in a store running a, a physical store on top of doing the bookkeeping. So I was running a store and doing the books. While I was sitting there waiting for customers to come in, I was doing all their books. So th that'll be important later, I'll get to that. So when I left that position, that I was working a lot of hours and I left that position, I decided I wanted to amp up my eBay business. Well, what I mean by eBay business is that when my husband and I got married, so there's a lot of different timeline things that came together at the same time. So I have to tell you backstories for each thing. But anyway, when my husband and I got married, we blended two families and two households. He had two kids, I had a kid, and we had two different households and we blended them. So we had some duplicates of things. We had three boys that were outgrowing stuff faster than they could wear it sometimes. So I started selling our personal items on eBay just very randomly, you know, here and there whenever I had something. So when I left my full-time job, I said, I want to ramp up my eBay business and maybe just get a part-time job and then just do the eBay stuff. So that was my initial plan and my initial plan was really not to um, do consignment. My initial plan was to just sell my own stuff. Believe me, I had plenty of stuff in my own house that I could sell for a long time before I ran out of stuff. However, which I did start doing, and then I ended up getting another bookkeeping job, but it was part-time, so I was still doing more of the eBay, the e, you know, eBay selling. However, my friend Vicki, who I've been friends with since I was 13 years old, she said, hey, will you sell stuff for me? And I said, okay, sure. That gives me more stuff to sell. And then I'll give you a, you know, a percentage of the profits. And I really was, still wasn't thinking that I could, do, I would do that for anybody else, but just for her. But after doing that for her for a couple weeks, I looked at my husband and I said, you know, this could be a business. Like I, this, this, this is a business model right here. Just, you know, selling stuff for other people and then giving them a percentage of the profits. In my mind, I hadn't even really put the name consignment on it. It was just like, I'll sell, you know, I'll sell your eBay stuff. You know, I'll sell stuff for you on eBay, whatever. So then um, Lori had been working for me at my, at this physical store that I was 
doing the bookkeeping ads, everything, and running. I hired her. I had knew, known her from Scouts. We were both had kids in Boy Scouting, and we'd known each other um, casually. I mean, you know, we were acquaintances. I wouldn't say we were really friends at the time. We were acquaintances. And I said, hey, you know, uh, she said, hey, I'll work for you. Or I said I could use some help with the store. And she said, hey, I'll work for you. And I said, are you serious? And so she was the first employee I hired to work at the store. So she really helped me out a lot at the physical store. Um, and then when I left the store, she stayed on at the store for a couple more months until they finally just closed down the store altogether. So then she says, hey, do you want some help with your eBay business? And I said, well, sure, but I can't really pay you. <laughs> I don't really, I'm not really making enough money to like, I don't know how we're going to pay, pay you. And she's okay, don't worry about it. We'll figure it out later. So I was like, all right. So she just started helping me. She's, she's really good at research. She started researching all the items because I really hated that part. Like I was taking all the pictures, doing, you know, ready, ready to list, but I, the researching the items and see how much they would sell for, it's kind of a pain and I didn't really want to do that as part. So she started doing that. And I told her, hey, you can give me your stuff to sell and I will, um, I'll give you 100% of the profits. Like you'll get all the money after all the eBay fees and everything, you'll get all the money. So that at least, at least you're getting something out of working for me. And she's like, okay, fine. So we did that and we ended up, I ended up giving her like a percentage of the sales over time. But anyway, she just was willing to just help me without really knowing how I was gonna be able to pay her. So as word spread, because, you know, I tell people I'm selling on eBay and things, the word spread, so people start giving me their stuff to sell. So I started just selling for other people I knew and I didn't have a, cons a contract in place. I was just telling people, hey, you know, whatever this percentage I'll give you after the sale. It was just all verbally. And um, I did that for years, years. And it wasn't even until, um, Last year, the beginning of last year, I finally made a contract and started sending it out to all these people and said, here's the contract. Could you please sign it? Even though I've been doing this for you for over, for, you know, it's a couple of years now. So um, now I have a contract and now we're like, like, I don't know, like 35 consigners later. I've never once advertised that, I, that I'm a consignment shop that I need, you know, to bring me your stuff. There's been some strangers that have found me on Google and brought me stuff and not strangers anymore. Um, there have been mostly still friends and family of mine, of Vicky's or Lori's. Oh, I didn't get into the Vicky part, so hold on. So Vicky was my first consigner, but she worked a job um, for the government. And last year she retired and she said, hey, I can come work for you if you need help. And I was like, well, I could use some, so I take the pictures because at this point, I didn't have enough time in my life to take pictures because I'm still working a job, a bookkeeping job where I work 15 to 20 hours a week. I also want to handle the higher level stuff of the store and just the website, um, finances, all that stuff, all that higher level stuff. It was hard to fit the time in to do everything. Lori works full time and she comes on and works at the store on, at night. Um, we were just, we needed some help, but I still wasn't sure how I was going to pay Vicki, but I was like, sure, come on, let's do it. I'll, I'll commit you to paying you an hourly rate. Just come on, do it. And hopefully if we take more pictures, we can make more listings, we'll make more sales. And that's just kind of how it's happened. And, um, so now Vicki brings in more people for me. Lori brings in more people, her friends and family. It's all, all just kind of spreading they're talking about it, I'm talking about it, and we just never have a, a shortage of consignments. In fact, we've put consignment income, in, in, we're, can, bleh, I can't talk. We've put consignment intake on hold for a couple months this year because we have so much stuff downstairs to list that I wanna be able to catch up on some of the people that gave me stuff last summer that I still haven't listed that I need to get listed. So I need to take care of my current consigners before I bring in anybody, any new consigners. So, anyway, things are going great. Obviously, if you don't know, 
who Lori and Vicky are, then you haven't been paying attention to my page because Lori does the Sundays with Lori. She does the laughs with Lori. She's been doing a lot of the social media lately, which I love, which is great. If you um, join us, we have, we do, I love the holidays. As you can tell, as you, if you watch Breakfast with Tiffany, as you know, I love the holidays. Yes, my Christmas stuff is still up because I don't want to take it down. Sue me. <laughs> like I, my husband said he's going to be bringing in the boxes, the Christmas boxes this weekend. I may or may not ignore the boxes and leave the Christmas stuff up for another week or two. I don't know. Of course, this chain, this, this tree and Mrs. Goose will change because we have to get ready for our January 22nd live sale. If you don't know, I'm going to tell you again. We do a Facebook live sale on the fourth Sunday of every month. I know it's hard to remember, but hi, Rocky. But they're all holiday themed. So on January 22nd, we're doing a Valentine's Day sale. We'll have lots of Valentine's Day decor, but we'll also have red and pink items. We kind of make fun with it. Uh, not make fun with it. Make it fun. We have, um, this is getting the longest breakfast of Tiffany's ever. We're, we um, we do trivia, we do games, prizes, laughs with Lori, <laughs> um, lots of stuff. And Lori and Vicky are both there to help me, and we have a great time. And we're usually dressed for the holiday, too. And Mrs. Goose dresses for the holiday. <gasps> I didn't tell you Mrs. Goose's origin story. I'll tell you this real quick. So Mrs. Goose came in on, one of my on, on a consignment. And I realized that I couldn't really sell her because she's got a base that's full of sand and it's cracked and it's leaking. And so she's taped up right now at the bottom. You know, she's, she's, she's a special needs goose. And I wasn't sure if anyone would adopt her a special needs goose on eBay. So I decided to keep her and she came with some outfits, but I also, I bought some other outfits. So I decided to keep her and make her the store mascot. And so she joins us for every live sale and she's always dressed to match the tree, which is always, the tree is always decorated for the holiday that we're doing. And she's um, been a great help in the store and everybody loves her. And we did have a contest to name her. And I think we named her um, Gabby. I don't know if it's Gabby or Greta, Gretel. I can't remember now what the, which one the winning name was because I still keep calling her Mrs. Goose. But we did have a contest to name her. And I think it was between Gabby and Gretel, and I can't remember which one won. But, I, oh my goodness, maybe we'll have to do it again. Because I still keep calling her Mrs. Goose. <laughs> so I guess we should get on a first name basis with Mrs. Goose. But anyway, so that's all my story. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you um, take some time to visit our page and um, come join us for a, a Sunday Night Live sale. And we will occasionally throw in other sales too, but those, we are consistently on the fourth Sunday of every month. That's our holiday sale, but we'll do some other specialized sales throughout the year too. So, also, all these Breakfast at Tiffany's are always on YouTube. We do have a YouTube channel, so like us and subscribe to us over there, please. And you can watch uh, past episodes. I don't even know what episode this, I think this might be episode 60 or 61. I can't remember now, but come check us out on YouTube and give us a like. We're on Instagram, TikTok, and Facebook, all over the place. So you can find us anywhere. And we sell on eBay, Poshmark, Mercari, Depop, Kitizen, Shopify website, Facebook, Instagram. What am I forgetting? I think that's it. <laughs> I think that's all. I don't know. Everywhere. Facebook Marketplace, everywhere. So anyway. I hope you have a great, great weekend, and I will see you soon. Thanks for listening. Bye.